we tend to think of large bodies of water, especially the oceans, as a whole body with all the water mixing freely and evenly. However, this is actually far from the truth. The oceans are especially subject to stratification, where different layers of the ocean fail to mix with each other at the boundary layers between the layers due to the various different properties of each layer. The different properties can be salinity, oxygenation and temperature. These in turn alter the water's density and that prevents the layers from mixing. These layers and the lack of mixing of course are only temporary. With storms, turbulence and other factors the layers will eventually merge and coalesce. With something as large as the oceans this can take a very long time indeed to happen. This lack of mixing can mean that areas of the ocean are virtually devoid of photosynthetic life forms, since light only penetrates about 80 metres into the water. This photic zone lacks sufficient nutrients or oxygen to sustain phytoplankton, there'll be nothing for larger creatures to feed off. And sometimes though, there can be an upwelling of the water from lower levels, which breaks through the layers of stratification, bringing in with it nutrients from the depths of the ocean. This can trigger the start of an algal bloom, where the phytoplankton rapidly grow and reproduce, but because there's so little of it present previously, there are few, very few predators actually to restrict this rapid growth. Eventually, nutrients are either used up or the predators catch up with the rapid growth and the ocean returns to normal. In some parts of the ocean, these blooms can even be seasonal and sea creatures migrate across the oceans ready for the blooms to arrive. There is, however, a wider implication in this layering of the oceans, especially in regard of salinity and melting of ice. There are generally two types of ice that affect our oceans. Glaciers and similar types of ice formed on land are generally made from fresh water. The other type is what's known as sea ice, which is made from frozen seawater. Due to its salt content, it forms relatively slowly since the salt water ice sinks to the bottom due to its increased density. This sea ice gradually loses its salt content over time. Multi-year sea ice can actually be drunk once it's melted as it has so little salt in it. This means that if large areas of glaciers or multi-year sea ice melt, it will turn add large amounts of fresh water to our oceans. Because this water is both fairly cold and fresh, it forms a layer on top of the ocean with a warmer salt water below it. This may prove a problem for areas like the Greenland ice sheet, which sits well below sea level, could melt more quickly from underneath as it's contacted by the warm salt water, which in turn could release more fresh waters into the ocean. Now the other issue is something called meridional overturning circulation, which is where vast ocean currents are driven by different temperatures and salt content of the water. That's why sometimes it's called the thermohaline circulation, where areas of water like the Gulf of Mexico are heated. The warm area of water is less dense than the colder water below it, so as a result, the warm water flows or spreads out across the ocean surface, sending warm water northwards towards Europe, what's known as the Gulf Stream. This warm area of water eventually cools down in and around the area of Norway as it cools, becomes less dense, and therefore it sinks to the bottom of the ocean floor. This cold water then again spreads out across the ocean floor, returns to the Gulf of Mexico, where the process continues. This overturning of the layers of the oceans is linked up all around the world, brings up nutrients from the floor, and also spreads warmth more evenly across our planet. However, because fresh water is also less dense than salt water, excessive meltwater from the Greenland ice sheet will also spread out across the ocean surface which in turn could restrict the amount of warm water reaching Europe. This could mean that significant global warming could actually mean that Europe becomes significantly colder as a result, and that there's less overturning of the ocean nutrients because there's less being brought up from the ocean floor. So that's how stratification and global warming could be closely linked in.